What's up, everyone? Welcome to Power Play with CJ. Today we're going to focus in on uh, the last episode of 24-7, and i recap the, the series, or the season, this this season, um, and, you know, look forward to next year, where the NHL is all but confirmed. It's going to be St. Louis and Detroit at the uh, Big House in Ann Harbor, Michigan, on the University of Michigan's campus, which is going to be great. Um, 100,000 people screaming, cheering. Uh, it's a great place to watch a college football game, and they've had college hockey games there in the past. So, you know, that's going to be unbelievable for the, the fans in Detroit, but we're going to talk about that later. Going to do the three stars of the season of 24-7, but before I do that, I'm going to give you a little more of the criteria for the th to be a, a, a star, so to speak. I do pair in every episode, but I'm going to do an honorable mention uh, of two people that really stood out to me, um, both from an entertainment standpoint and from what you can learn from actually both of them when you think about it. Uh, first off is uh, Granny Callie, uh, Ryan Callahan's grandmother. She was uh, she got that fighting spirit in her ninety something year old woman, cheering, screaming for her grandson. I think we all have a parent or grandparent that's like that in our life that uh, you know, constant show of support no matter what, and uh, you know, I see other boys screaming on the ice, and I, I know, I know, I I had a lot of family members like that, and I know most of the audience probably has too. And uh, she was a great person. Now you know, she had a, uh, you really see where Callahan gets his his blood and guts uh, persona on the ice. You know, you got a great family makeup. And I came from came from good roots, you know. It's uh, the foundation. It's your family, and he, he was raised well. Uh, number the second honorable mention. Uh, this, you know, I learned a lot about myself through this young man was uh, Liam Trainer, the uh, ten year old uh, disabled child that um, John Tortorella befriended through the Rangers Garden of Dreams Foundation. Um, he had cystic fibrosis, and uh, you know, a kid that wasn't gonna fear shot in life that the Rangers. Through the Garden of Dreams Foundation, I reached out and brought a board. And uh, Tortorella uh, obviously is a very, very rough exterior, and uh, you know it's obviously evidenced by the way he coaches and the way he gives interviews and all that bullshit. But get a real soft interior, you know, taking care of a kid like this and making sure he feels, uh, you know, like part of the team. You know, uh, it's great to see him at the Winter Classic. You know, cheering on his beloved Broadway blue shirts, and you know, as a hockey fan, you appreciate that because. Uh, you know, it's passion that, that fuels the game of hockey more than anything, and that kid's got plenty of it. And, uh, you know, the fact that he can, you know, live his life like that, not giving a fair shot, and still have a positive outlook. <laughs> Shit, I, mean, I didn't even mean to start crying, but, you know, that's amazing. And uh, you learn a lot about yourself through someone like that. And, you know, the Ra I think he's helping the Rangers more than they're helping him. You know, that he they make him feel welcome, but uh, you really can learn a lot about, you know, yourself and... You see the day-to-day -day adversity people like that have to go through at a young age and, you know, what their family has to go through. And to see the Rangers, through Coach Tortorella, take care of a kid like that is just outstanding. It's not just the Rangers. The Bruins, every team in hockey, uh, you know, does it. You know, making appearances to kids that, you know, didn't, got the, caught the rough breaks, you know, catching a rough break in hockey's, you know, not getting a fortuitous bouncer in the net or, you know, taking a puck off your face. Too many of those, that's why I'm so ugly, but... Um, you know, getting a rough break in life like this kid did is something totally different. And the Rangers and Torts have done a great job with them. And I wish him and his family nothing but the best going forward. Oh, God. I couldn't get through it without crying. But uh, back to the humorous part of the power play. The uh, actual three stars. <laughs> Promise mess I want to do this. Um, King Henrik. Number three, if anything, just for playing guitar with Johnny McEnroe. DJ's hanging out with Johnny McEnroe. Uh, that was for you, Mikey. I love the Beach Boys. Uh, you know, obviously Johnny Mac, the original bad boy tennis, going to play guitar with him. going to be something. He, uh, he'd, be, he'd make a decent hockey player. He'd be a, a third line. Of a lot. He'd be a Mike Rupp of sorts, so to speak, <laughs> with his fiery intensity for the game and uh, passion and loving the re letting the refs hear it. Um, King Henrik really brought a lot. He's got, got the style going on for him. He's a... Uh, one of New York's best dressed men from what the uh, New Yorkers said in the past. And I think he's married to a Swedish princess, so that gets him on, th on the three stars list for sure. Number two, uh, talk, just hopped on him, Torts. Uh, I love Tortorella. I love him when he's at Tampa Bay. Um, I love him uh, he's with the Rangers, and uh, he's got a great personality. And uh, you really you don't, have to, you don't have to think about what he's thinking because he, he'll let you know it. And he really, you know, his post-winter post classic comments have gone up five thirty grand, you know, for, for being a... a uh, foul mouth mass hole. That's, that's an issue of the beast, but Torch is a great uh, ambassador for the game. Like I said, through Frank Kelly, um, Liam Trainer on board and, you know, making him a part of the team or just watching him. You know, he's got a great personality and his uh, love hate relationship with Larry Brooks. Um, you know, being writer for the New York Post is obviously something to 
I really enjoy reading, you know. Brooks, he's a sarcastic little shit, and uh, towards he ain't much better, so that's the nature of the beast with those guys. Uh, number one, I can't stand the guy, I can't stand the team, but Ilya Brizgalov. <laughs> The uh, the Siberian Husky eating his kid that he thinks is like a hot blonde. Um, the universe and what we're living in and the fact that he freaked the shit out of me on more than one occasion with his philosophical in, uh, outlooks on life and stuff like that. You know, just talk about, you know, Liam Trainer making you look at yourself. Br British Collins, I'm looking at myself going, maybe I'm not that fucking crazy. You know, there's some goalie in Philly, you know, blocking blocking shots and uh, talking about how big the universe is, so maybe I'm maybe I'm the normal one, you know, but uh, Bridge got a lot of obviously he didn't get to play the one at Classic because of his poor play up to that, but he uh, he's a pretty cool guy and uh, look for the NHL to feature him in more media features because I think if guys, uh, more external fans start seeing, you know, there are crazy people like this playing the game, they'll be more inclined to tune in and uh, see how awesome the game is, and I think Bridge got a lot of, um, can do that, you know, and like I said, he's kind of a weird dude, kind of, I'm being used very lightly, he's, he's an incredibly weird dude, but a uh, great personality nonetheless. Uh, this episode was great. Last year, they really didn't recap the classic, um, that was, I think, the one Achilles heel on the show in, episode, in season one, they didn't give you, you can get a good look at the at the classic itself, and I think last year's one of classic, the 2011 one, was the one of classic that may drastically have May have changed the history of hockey with the Crosby concussion. You know, the headman hit a couple days later, may have, whatever. But that collision with Seckel may very well have changed Crosby's career, and in that, the history of the NHL, you know, in terms of records and all that shit. Because Crosby's our marquee player for the most part, and, you know, you lose him for the last 41 games of last season. And you, you, we've only seen him in eight games this year, so the fact that in a full calendar year, he's only played 49 games. No, he's only played eight games out of a possible, yeah, he's played, yeah, four, I, I added, since last season he's played 49 games, since a puck dropped in 2010 he's played 49 games, I think that's what I'm trying to say, 41 plus 8, yeah, my math isn't that bad, not the brightest bulb in the pack, but, uh, at any rate, uh, Scott Hartnell, I never liked him, uh, as a, you know, huge country music fan, I was kind of all the National Predators, and uh, his uh, on the ice antics are just too fucking annoying for me to tolerate. You know, the the fro that really isn't a fro because it sucks. Um, he's got, you know, no style points. And uh, just a big mouth. And every time he fights, he gets a shit kicked out of him, you know. Philly's got, and I, I've met some very nice Flyers fans over the years. They're few and far between. But Philly's got some real fucking assholes that have played with them over the years. Him, Carcillo, guys like that that just, you know, no regard for the game. You know, Hotno wants to piss and moan about Rupper uh, doing the, the Yaga salute. You know, who the fuck are you... I don't know. Seriously. What the fuck have you done for the game? Do you have a cup ring? Do you, have you, sco you scored 30 goals. Okay, I'll give you that. But, you know, you're fucking, you're a little pest. You got ugly hair. Scott, I mean, Jeff Cotto's banging your wife. What have you contributed to the game? You know? And I, I, he's, he's a great player. I'm not going to knock that. But, like, dude, hop off Mike Rupp's balls. He's got a cup ring, you don't, asshole. Um... It's good to see Mark Stahl back in the back in the lineup for the classic second year in a row that a Stahl brother has made a season debut in the Winter Classic, which is a pretty cool little footnote, I think. You know, uh Mark Stahl had to work his way back from a concussion, you know, it seems like everyone in the league's getting concussed these days. And uh, it's good to see him as a fan of hockey, you know, you need a guy like that out there. Um good heart and soul defenseman. And uh, it's funny, look at the rivalry between Philly and the Rangers. Philly's always been the grind it out, muck it up, win dirty kind of team, and the Rangers have always been kind of a Flash and dash, um, you know, high scoring, superstar team, but that's changed now. I, I think Phil. I think they're both very, very blue collar teams, and they're both enjoyable to watch because uh, they uh, Rangers aren't scoring a ton, but they uh, they play well in their own zone. And uh, King Henrik, he's outstanding. He's the best goalie in hockey. He uh, except him, Thomas and Tuka Rask, obviously. He's the best goalie south of Boston. Yeah, he, uh, he's just. <laughs> I can't even put in words how good the guy is. Uh, obviously, he's won a gold medal. He's uh, done a ton of great things in his career. He just hasn't he hasn't won a Vezina yet. I don't see I don't see that guy's won a Vezina. You know, he's playing the classic was outstanding. I think his stop on Bria that led to McDonough glove in the puck and leading the penalty shot may go down as the save of the year. You look at where it was on the national stage. Forty, you know, was it thirty-seven thousand screaming assholes in Philly? He shuts them up with a save to win the game. You know, and his stop on uh, Bria, which I, I was kind of intrigued by. 
Um, I don't know why he didn't have Drew. I, Bree has a great penalty shot guy, great um, shootout guy, but Drew is Drew. You know, he's one of the top scorers in the NHL, and he's adept offensively. You know, he can do tremendous things with the puck. And, uh, you know, he, uh, I would have I would have him take the penalty shot if I was Coach Lavulette. I, I mean, Lavulette's an NHL coach, and I'm not, so he, you know, he made the right call. Uh, his opinion, that's that's all that matters. Plus, you know, Monday morning quarterback, and, you know, a couple days after the classic, saying you should have done this, should have done that. You know, and the heat, it had Brie had scored, you know, it would have been the right, right move. So, you know. I gotta do what you gotta do in those circumstances, and uh, it's tough to see Yogg's with an injury. Um, hopefully he's back soon. He's a guy I always admired, um, just how skilled he was and how, at a, such a large man. Uh, to have such soft hands was kind of, you know, wow. You know, he, he really had to see Yager play in person. I remember I saw him playing in '07. He was with the Rangers. Um, at the God, just how skilled he was. Just he could just stick in through everything. I was like, wow. You really were in awe of just how skilled of a player he was for guys, you know, six four, six five, one of the bigger guys, um, to have had so much skill, you know. Uh I already talked about the game itself. It was a tremendous game. I think the refs kinda of fucked up at the end. But that was a good call on the penalty shot. That was a penalty shot. You know, when you put your hand on the puck and the, I've refed probably a thousand games in my life. You know, I know I know how to call a penalty shot and uh you know, refs made the right call. The Callahan call is bullshit though. I mean I wasn't grabbing a stick, got hold down by teaming it. You know, I'm not saying that I'm not a Flyers fan, but I'm, you know, it should have been, should have been, uh, he got pulled down, you know. I mean, out of the two teams, I like the Rangers more. Uh, Rangers have always, Rangers are the only New York team I can talk. I said that before, you know, and it's an issue with the Beast. Uh, a few other things. I can't wait for next season. Uh, when they follow the Red Wings and San Louis Blues, it's going to be a pretty cool thing. Hopefully Coach Hitch uh, Hitchcock doesn't get fired between now and then because he's a great personality. If you think Tullet says the F word a lot, you haven't heard Hitchcock talk. Um, oh, and the best quote of uh, this episode was uh, Maxim Talbot saying uh, Tyler Kennedy spared his penis. You know, he said the, said the P word on, on TV. Kind of, if you went to Catholic Memorial High School, you'd understand the, the immaturity factor. He said penis. <laughs> yeah, we, we used to draw dicks on it. It was, it was a great, great time back in the day at, at CM. But um, that's all I got to say. It was a great great season. I can't look, I look forward to seeing uh, the Red Wings in St. Louis next year. That's it for the power play of CJ. Recap of 24-7. Stay tuned for more episodes throughout the hockey season and through the offseason. I have accrued many more fans through this. Accrued, accrued, whatever the fuck. Um, through doing these 24-7 recaps, and uh, hopefully you stay with me. Later, guys.